We're out here today sampling on Saginaw Bay of Lake Huron to help understand what happens on the Great Lakes during the time of year when we're not out working on boats. We spend a lot of time and energy sampling and monitoring the lakes from April to October. We know very little about what happens the rest of the year and how it might impact the open water season. And we're doing this in coordination with a number of groups, both in the United States and Canada, doing what's called a, a winter grab. And we're all coming out to collect the same information and the same types of samples across all five Great Lakes. So the instruments that are uh, about to breach the ice here, uh, one is called a flora probe, which measures different algal species throughout the column um, with light. It's a visual um, optical sensor. And then the, um, the blue device here um, is measuring oxygen and temperature and, and um, a little more rudimentary parameters about what's under the ice. Right now I'm measuring the thickness of the ice um, and that can be important because it can affect the amount of light that's available to uh, you know, primary producers. We're looking for uh, quagga and zebra mussels and then we're actually going to take those back to the lab. So we're increasingly understanding that the lake is not dormant in winter. Unlike the trees in your yard or your garden that goes dormant for the winter, the water beneath the ice is very much alive. The phytoplankton are doing photosynthesis with what light makes it through the ice. The rest of the food web is consuming them. The fish are out here uh, uh, eating and, and generating a, a productive fishery. One of the things we hope to learn fate of nutrients that come from agriculture in the watershed and enter the lake. We know in the summertime how they lead to things like harmful algal blooms, but we don't know a lot about the fate of those nutrients that are coming in during the wintertime.